Boston Celtics gave the Golden State Warriors a taste of their own medicine, ruthlessly bombing away from three-point land in key stretches to ultimately blow the game open late and erase some potentially serious issues along the way. Let's start with an unsung hero in Peyton Pritchard, who got limited minutes but made the most of them while he was out there. Watch the perfectly timed hammer play, where the little drag screen for Grant Williams makes Jordan Poole turn his head, and that's when Daniel Tice sets the flare screen. Draymond Green did not sniff this out until it was too late as a skip pass for a quick release corner three. Check the great hustle in transition. Watch how quickly he changes ends. If he decides to not take off like this, they don't get the layup to start the fourth quarter comeback. It's the little things, like this physical screen he sets on Clay, that directly leads to the opening for Jalen Brown to get in middle. Worried about the lob, Green won't step over and they cut it to three. This is similar to the hammer play for Pritchard, just without the screen, as Tatum looks to drive, but thinks better of it when he sees a wide open Pritchard because Porter fully switched onto Williams instead of stunting, and he hits another monster bucket to keep the momentum with the guys in green. He again sprints to the corner full speed to force the defense to spread, and when he gets the ball off a nice attack on the catch to the baseline by White, he could have listened to Tatum on the weak side who's telling him to skip it to Brown, but Clay was in that passing lane trying to lure him to throw it. Instead, he makes a simple pass, and Horford breaks the tie on the open shot. And that brings me to a favorite subject of mine, the skip pass. The Celtics used them last night to generate a ton of points, as Williams first attacks the closeout in the corner before skipping back to the top, and then Tatum gets an advantage by drawing four defenders to him in the lane before expertly skipping to the right corner to set up Tice with a catch and shoot three. We get two skips in a row on the break that bends the defense completely out of position before Marcus Smart uses that space to travel, I mean go around the world on a floater. Tatum gets a baseline drive and throws another skip pass, this time the more difficult backhanded throw to the weak side wing, one more to Horford catches the defense with no one to rotate, and he catapults the three to keep them close in the third. Whatever Ime Udoka did mid-season to get this team to start sharing the ball this way has been nothing short of magic, and I'm always advising coaches that they need an overarching goal for every interaction which will help them keep their emotions under control and ensure positive outcomes. That's exactly what Noom does to help and support you to eat better and live a more healthy lifestyle. With daily bits of information to digest, they slowly help you rethink how you approach eating and exercise. And I've got to say, after a couple of weeks, I've lost some weight and have totally changed how I eat. We all have behavior chains that sometimes need to be broken and Noom's focus on getting into good habits really helped me get into a rhythm of healthy eating and exercise. By logging every meal, weighing in every day, and having a real person who is trained in psychology, fitness, and nutrition to speak directly to, Noom keeps my overall goals in sight. I don't get upset if I have a bad day now, since Noom is there to remind me that there's plenty of room to be myself on this road, and I just need to get back on the path for the next meal. Start building better habits for healthier, long-term results by signing up for a free evaluation and a free 7-day trial at Noom.com slash bball. It isn't necessarily hard to play like this. You're looking for baseline drives and then the corner is the first option, then the wing. Williams skips to Tatum in the corner, who quickly moves it one more time to an open white, who is splashing all night. With this brown drive thwarted, the Warriors defense probably felt good about itself, but why is Porter helping like this? Clay is already in good position and it directly opens up another skip pass for another open three from Derek White Mama. The skip pass gang kept going as Tatum uses it back towards the top, which allows Pritchard to attack the closeout mismatch. This lured Iguodala to help one pass away, opening another closeout to attack, which Williams does with the baseline side drive. The rotation must slide over like this, and when Poole is a step slow closing out back to his man, White can let another wide open shot fly. And they catch Otto Porter completely lost on the weak side as White drives down the lane line. He's completely shut down on the drive, but he's been trained to find the skip and throws a perfect lead pass to the open area as Brown flags it down before going to town. Now let's look at the main storyline, the sizzling three-point shooting from Derek White and Al Horford. Early in the first, Old Al can just trail the play into a wide open three. Draymond inexplicably gives him the shot despite him shooting over 43% in the playoffs till this point. 
Derek White, on the other hand, had been struggling from behind the arc, so I don't blame the Warriors for daring him to shoot it by going underneath this screen, and he continued that struggle long off the back rim. Perhaps because they gave him a couple of practice shots, he got hot a bit later, as Jordan Poole gives him 5 feet of space and dares him to shoot it. The Warriors continue daring him, as Draymond helps on penetration one pass away, but it's an easy pass and then a wide open shot that starts the Derek White experience. Here's a cool set that starts as a double pin down. Watch White curl around the first screen, and when Horford tries to pin down for Tatum, he realizes Draymond is pretty much ignoring him, so he just steps back and gets a decent look. Late in the third, look where Draymond is while Horford is his man. This was inexplicable as Horford lights them up yet again with an open three-pointer. This one told me the basketball gods were on the Celtics' side. As the offense was stymied by the Warriors, the shot clock was about to expire, but because White was given so many practice shots, he had gotten into rhythm quickly and just nails this one over Steph Curry. And Horford again steps into a trailing three when Looney overhelps down low and cannot recover in time to prevent Horford from giving the Celtics the lead. A couple of more threes land in the net down the stretch, as the Celtics defense also shut down the Warriors offense, and they won convincingly, taking away home court advantage and making a lot of Warriors fans nervous. But it's way too early, there's a lot of basketball to be played, and it's time for the Warriors to answer the call in Game 2.